What's up, everybody? Welcome to the House of Mario, the award-winning Nintendo podcast, backed by 120 Power Star rating. And the doors to episode 125 are open. I'm your host, Drew Agnew, and joining me, as always, is my best buddy, Bryce DeWitt. How are we going, my friend? How are you, my friend? Good. Good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. feeling all right? No, yeah. no, I'm feeling really good today. Yeah, yeah, feeling good. Cool. Good yeah, shit. Yeah. What about yourself? Feeling uh, wonderful? Oh, uh, yeah, feeling feeling okay here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What'd you do? You fixed the trampoline today? You said in the message when you're sending, you're yeah. talking to me? Yeah, yeah, temporarily, yeah. What yeah. happened to the tramp? You decided to oh, jump on it? No, it's, it's just broken. Not not the netting, the the safety guard. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Took a hit. Oh, well. Oh, well. Move on, fix the trampoline. There There's nothing go. worse than a broken trampoline, but I'm glad you fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> so today on the show, we're going to be talking about the Game Awards, a few predictions about what might be announced by Nintendo, go through some of the nominations that uh, Nintendo and uh, games on the Switch are nominated in, and mm-hmm. uh, have a good time doing that. But first, Bryce, let's talk a little bit about Pokemon again. We're not going to go uh, heavy into Pokemon like we have like the last month. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't don't be too worried. But no. in the post game, we're continuing to shiny hunt. Yep. And we've had a bit of luck. We have. Yeah. We have. So we'll start off with you, Bros. You've had a bit of luck. So after after reading your Twitter post, um, I remembered that I'm like, oh yeah, I've still got like a box of eggs to do. That's right. So, um, I decided. Well, I guess after your Twitter post and seeing your your second shiny pop up. I hadn't gotten my second one yet. I'd, I'd taken a break from Pokemon for a couple of weeks, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, all right, I better hatch these eggs." Second one in shiny Treepy. It was waiting in my party for those two weeks. Yeah, so you actually had, you actually had that egg. I had that egg. Okay, yeah. that's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was. You know, if I took the time out of my day to hatch a couple more eggs, I would have had it, and I would have forgotten about it. Mm. But <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, you know, that's my second shiny. I'm now moving on to my next one, which will probably be Rhianiclus. Nice, nice. Or Solossus, if you want to go by its baby. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's like a bit darker Solossus, isn't it? Uh, it's blue instead of green. Oh, is it? Right, yeah. okay. Blue yeah. gel instead of green. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, shiny, especially on the second egg when you've already like had it <laughs> for a bit. That's pretty cool. It's funny, when I was talking to Barry, actually, when we were fixing up the trampoline, uh, he was just like... He's just like that's a very neon. That's a very neon Dragapult. And I'm just like, yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of a stealth bomber. Mm. The water's base after, like, hmm. <laughs> not very stealthy when there's You'll big, fucking, big, big fucking yellow neon plane flying <laughs> in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I found uh, Chin Chow, mm-hmm. which evolves into Lantern, one of my favorite mons. Mm-hmm. And I was, uh, I forgot what I was doing, but I was basically like, oh, bugger, I'll try for Chin Chow. I'll see if I'll be able to get yeah. one. Because I had a, had a bit of... I had I had the uh, the urge to move my thumbs a bit while watching uh, the Good Place on Netflix. Actually, I was like, "Yeah, I'll try." While I'm doing this, yeah. And eleven eggs in, I got it. And I was just like, I looked down and I like, got it. And I was just like, it it wasn't at the stage where I was even thinking <laughs> about getting it yet. So yeah. it it just it just happened. I'm like, I just went, oh, are "You serious? What the fuck?" And Chantel next to me is like. What? I'm like, nothing? No. Just, <laughs> just sort of like rub my eyes. Like, what? <laughs> it's unfortunate though because it was at the stage before I was able to get the one with the right nature to put the Everstone on. Uh, so when I got it, I checked it. It had an adamant nature. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. Rip. Oh, well, at least you yeah. can change it pretty easily now. Yeah. So, and it had the wrong ability and it didn't have that good at IVs. Like it was before I was actually able to... Good, lock, thing, good lock. thing you can change all of that. Yeah, that's right. Because if that was back in... You know, the 3DS games, that would be just... Absolutely shocking. Devastating. Just kind of like my shiny Latios, which had a... Uh, yeah, a- an adamant nature, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which just, oh, that makes it useless. Yeah, mm. fantastic. Yeah, so <laughs> so I um went into the battle tower a bit, got some battle points. I got the uh, mint I needed, got the ability capsule. Now he's all good and rocking the go. Like, Lantern's not one of the not one of the best Pokemon. It's in the PU category on Smogon, but it's one of my favorites. So I'm like, oh, yeah. I like one, and I always really like the sort of uh, green tinge to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, happy I got it. And now I'm going for a Litwick, which evolves into a Chandelure. Cool. Which is not one of my favorite Pokemon. Yeah, it's got a really dope shiny, too. Yeah, it looks like a Halloween pumpkin, kind of. It's got, it's got orange. Like orange flames. I love it. Mm. Yeah. I, I do actually want to hunt that one day because of how cool it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so 
um yeah hopefully maybe your next episode i'll be able to say i've got that one too but we'll, we'll see <laughs> yeah we'll see yeah i thought about doing quagsire as well but i'm not sure i like that pink mm. it's a bit too pink <laughs> a bit too pink a bit too pink yeah, yeah. you know you know when you really bright pink quagsire mm. Need some Cause he's one of my favorite pokemon because he's just a derpy arsehole <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know but um yeah i'll probably just probably just move on to rianaclus and then fight myself on what i want to do next i, th- I thought about doing hatterene but uh hatterene's extremely annoying to get competitively viable yeah i know you've got to get like no speed up evs no none whatsoever mm. and then, so it works with trick room yeah that's yeah. right yeah and i mean it's the same with rianaclus in some some ways but i don't feel like it's as demanding i don't know i could be wrong uh well, you would want a similar setup. You would want the trick room setup. with no EVs, but it's so. still but it's still fairly slow anyway. Yeah. It's Does the it, same as Hatterene. Ha, it has a base stat of thirty, so it's pretty ordinary anyway. Yeah. But if somebody already has worse speed than you, which is it's running the same setup, which is very have. unlikely to happen. Yeah. Which is the thing I think because that's pretty unlikely to happen in most, especially most most teams in the meta at the moment, and they're all you know relatively decent speed. Mm. I mean, uh. One one Pokemon I'd love to go for is uh, Galarian Demanitan. Yeah, so would I. Um, mm. Because have you seen how disgusting that thing is? I haven't really. Nah. Oh, it's shocking! It's absolutely shocking. There's if, a lot of disgustingly powerful Pokemon though. If you can get so maybe it all evens itself out. <laughs> if you can manage, I, w- I watched the Shofu video actually. Yeah. If you can manage to get a uh, Galarian Demanitan. You manage to get off a free belly drum. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and it has... And if you've got Zen mode on, it, like, it immediately bumps up its speed to one of the highest highest possible in the game. Bumps up its base attack to, like, 135, and you've just belly drummed. Watch out. It's ridiculously <laughs> stupid, yeah. I watched Shofu's entire team get just absolutely demolished by this belly drum Dynamax... <laughs> Mm. Uh, Galarian Domanitan it was absolutely disgusting <laughs> Jesus but I love Domanitan so I've been meaning to do it but I, I, I need it to, I need it's hidden ability yeah if I want to do that one properly mm. Mm. yeah the Zen I really like the Zen mode how it's like a basically like a, a snowman with a bomb <clears> in it <throat> and it's the ice fire really cool I really hate though how it is um, it's hidden ability mm. I don't understand why that is that's like the main draw to Darmanitan yeah might make the form a bit more I guess rarer or desirable I guess so I guess it's, it's just it's just still it's just yeah still sort of annoying because now I have to go find one actually the, you know that might even be probably the next thing I do is go find a den for that goddamn asshole <laughs> <laughs> and try and farm it like uh, Barry did with his Gyarados mm. yeah I was, did he catch that in a yeah, great he, den he, he farmed dens until he got a Moxie Gyarados because well yeah yeah. He sort of said, there's nothing wrong with Intimidate Gyarados. I said, no, there's not. But, like, the problem with Gyarados is, is that um, you've got either Intimidate or Moxie. And Intimidate's going to work for some things. Yeah. Uh, others, it's not. Whereas Moxie's always going to work in your favor no matter what way you look at it. So, mm. yeah. It's one of those situations. He'll, he'll come across a situation one day where he'll be like, Intimidate would have been good because, goddamn, I need to lower his attack. But. Oh yeah, but you got haze for that. Haze is like really prevalent in the meta at the moment mm. um, because there's so many boosting Pokemon, like insane amounts of boosting Pokemon. Yeah, they're all boost- they're all boosting their attack. There's heaps of good belly drum users. There's you know Phalanx with no retreat. Yeah, you, know, you you really want to utilize haze in the meta. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, it's, I'm really enjoying just watching a yeah, competitive Pokemon. A lot of YouTubers are doing like the I guess the road to Master Ball rank. Been watching a bit of A Drive <coughs> and stuff. It's been yeah, because it's been a, good to watch. There's a very very good um, competitive um, draw mm. with this game, which is why I'm breeding competitive shinies instead of just regular ones, mm. and just like you know half assing them. I'm doing them properly because the competitive the competitive is really you know much much more desirable to play than what it has been. Yeah, well, I put like a tiny bit of emphasis on it mm. and. Uh, it's not all that surprising that people actually, oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I reckon next year, 
um, I want to do like Twitch streaming maybe once a week or once a fortnight or whatever I can manage depending on what time of year it is. Yeah. And I'd love just to like do Pokemon. Yeah. Because I, f- I found it a lot of fun doing it on my 3DS <laughs> through my uh, tampered with uh, 3DS. <laughs> so I could stream with that and that was a lot of fun. So doing it on the Switch I reckon would be pretty cool. The only annoying thing is is like if you want to pad out a bit of time in your stream you're going to have to find something else to do because I know that you can only do like 15 battles a day or something in competitive. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. still, that's still a little bit though. Yeah. Bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. It will still pad a bit of time. You know, you might get a couple of hours out of it, but if you want to do maybe a four-hour stream, you're going to have to find something to fill the rest of the two hours. Yeah, I think uh, shiny uh, hunting will take a bit of time. And those people that do it for a living, you know, and that, that, that's the other thing as well. Yeah, yeah. Those people that do it for only, I guess it's so you can't just... It's just so you can't Smash cheese up it. to it. Yeah, yeah. They want you to. They want you to make steady progress. Yeah, makes fair enough. And fifteen a day, you know, it's like you know, go and pat your dog. And fifteen a day is still probably enough to get you like from nothing to halfway up great ball or yeah. something. And you know, you've got a whole month. So mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look forward to doing it. I just want to. I'm just at the moment obsessed with uh, getting shinies. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah, competitive shinies, mind mm. you. Yeah. All right, Bryce, let's uh, talk about some small news. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but uh, one interesting uh, news topic I want to bring up is that the Nintendo Switch is uh, launching in China on the actual the day this podcast comes out, mm-hmm. um, at least our date in Australia. Don't know about local time China, don't know. Um, so it might be, could be like a few hours before, could be a few hours after. Yeah. Not sure on the timing. But yeah, China is getting the Switch that's um, big news for China. Yeah, huge, huge news. We talked about it, a, you know, a few months ago, whenever when it got announced. But this is a story from uh, My Nintendo News, and it reads: Chinese gamers won't have to wait long to get a Nintendo Switch. Tencent has announced in a press conference that the official mainline China version of the Tencent Nintendo Switch, and it's interesting too because it's called the Tencent Nintendo Switch, and uh, I dare say that's just a brand name because everyone knows what. Tencent is, but no one's got any idea what Nintendo is. Probably for the no, main part over there, they do the. Re- I think the reason that is is because Tencent's doing all the management of their shit mm. over there. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get into yeah. it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, it will launch on December tenth for RMB two thousand and ninety nine. Um, I don't know what RMB stands. For. I know it's their currency, but I don't know what it actually means. Yeah, no idea. Yeah, well, it's the equivalent to three hundred dollars US, so same same price. Yep. It will come bundled with new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe and a one year warranty. Uh, the games will cost RMB three nine nine, which is about forty two US dollars. Uh, so far, only new Super Mario Bros. Deluxe has been approved. But that will soon change. Pre-orders have been announced for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Super Mario Odyssey. And there are other first-party titles on the way. There will be, uh, there will also be releases for other uh, titles made in China, such as Icy and the Chinese Parents. <laughs> what? Uh, Nintendo and Tencent are currently working with Chinese developers to release indie games to the Switch, and they're also working with AAA partners for the release of additional third-party titles. Tencent's own Next Studio was one of the partners mentioned. As for region locking, game carts will not be uh, region locked, uh, as with other regional releases of the Switch. Online services, however, are not quite known at this time. Uh, all we know is that Tencent will be powering the local services for online play and WeChat will be supported. So WeChat, for those that don't know, is how they basically pay for things. Right. And it's, it's, it's how they pay for things, it's how they chat, it's like just how they do like most things over there online. Okay. Have you heard of it before? No. <laughs> yeah. I don't keep up with Chinese restrictions. I don't know either, but I probably heard about it through a similar story. <laughs> in regards to Tencent or something at some point. It's it's really crazy how, like, a lot of these, you know, big Asian countries like China or even, you know, like, North Korea. I mean, we all, we all know what North Korea is going through. But mm. um, <laughs> just a lot of these Asian countries that have that much restricted access. Yeah. You know, in, in considering that, like, a lot of the stuff that goes into making these things come from there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And- They've come a long way because it wasn't that long ago where video games were just banned. 
Yeah, they were. From Sony, from Xbox, from PlayStation. Now, it's to the point where these companies are just starting to get into the market. Yeah. And it'll, be, it'll be good to see what kind of impact it will have on the Switch. Um, whether they whether it's a huge hit and it makes Nintendo actually get to you know the goal of 100 million units or you know it's just like a nice little side business for them or whatever yeah. it is but it'd be interesting to see yeah what happens um, it also says that Nintendo the Switch Lite hasn't been announced or anything but uh, it will probably get a release in 2020 so yeah that's that's the news on the Switch coming the chart good stuff yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just a little interesting. I don't think uh, we have any Chinese listeners, but if you're over there, enjoy your Nintendo Switch. Um, mm, yeah. Having that launch with New Super Mario Bros. U might be a bit scary since that's what I played launch day on Wii U. <laughs> and we all know how that console went. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is also my Nintendo news. Uh, Tokyo Mirage Session Switch includes new EX story and all of the DLC support quests. So this is just a tweet from Nintendo of Europe. Discover a brand new EX story starring Tabuska and Kiari when <laughs> Tokyo Mirage Sessions FEX Encore comes to Nintendo Switch on the 17th of the 1st, 2020. All previous DLC support quests are also included in the Nintendo Switch version. Um, nice. I know you got this super cheap on Wii U in a JB Hi-Fi Wii U clearance. Uh, I also owned it when it first came out. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did too. Yeah. I did, yeah. You got the special edition when you... Yeah. No, I got the special edition for super cheap, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm interested in this game, but I don't think, um, say, February or January, sorry, um, I'll be... I'll be pretty busy. I don't know if I'll be itching <laughs> for a big RPG, but it is. Now it's on Switch. It's definitely something I want to get around to eventually. It was on Wii U as well, but by the time it came out on Wii U, I was like, yeah. Don't care. Yeah. And I, I love like the aesthetic of like J-pop and um, RPGs and Fire Emblem. And oh, it's probably right up your alley. I think it so, is, yeah. yeah. So I'm keen I'm keen to get in there. It's very it's very cool Like um, from my playtime with it, uh, which I still haven't finished it yet. But um, it's it's very sort of cinematic in terms of like how the battles perform and stuff like that, and I think um, I like the look of that too. It's it's mm. very yeah, it's very neat. Uh, the only th- the only real gripe I have with it, I guess, is that what it sort of takes from is obviously Shin Megami Tensei mostly for its combat and whatever it may be. You know, the Persona type of deal. That's kind of what it is. It's like its own little Persona game, but it doesn't feel as fleshed as a Persona game. Mm. So, I mean, it kind of just... I guess the Fire Emblem aesthetic kind of lends into, like, making the meat of the game feel a bit more. Mm. But if you don't have much attachment to Fire Emblem either, it's kind of like, mm. I still remember when that game was, was announced. Tim mm. Megami, cross Fire Emblem. We're like, oh my god, holy shit, it's going to be amazing. And when they sort of announced it, we're like, that is not what we were expecting. No. Expecting just like, you know, yeah, Fire Emblem gameplay with the grids and everything crossed with uh, Timigami Sense- Sensei, which is like very... Yeah, sort of dark. Yeah, dark. Oh yeah, we'll see a cross of that. But yeah, it just came out completely different. Hmm. And it's, apart from like the characters from Fire Emblem, I'm like, where is the Fire Emblem? <laughs> it's yeah. kind of hard to say it, but yeah. cool game regardless. You did, yeah. yeah. No, it's definitely good, yeah. Hmm. Um, so this is another short one. So Sony Music is publishing a Mother original soundtrack. So the Mother series soundtrack will be available to Japanese customers on Christmas Day and will be published by Sony Music Direct. The double vinyl uh, analog recording will be priced up to 5,500 yen. Uh, and uh, it... It's a two disc, and it says uh, basically what the tracks are. But I'm not going to go through all the tracks. Okay. Um, so it, it looks cool. It's like silver vinyls of the Mother soundtrack, and it's just a little bit notable since it's like um, Mother's actually getting some love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and also, it's Sony, uh, Sony Music, which I know is a completely different entity to obviously PlayStation. Yeah. But it is just like when you hear like a Nintendo franchise and Sony in the same things. So, oh. It yeah. just grabs your eye. <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah. So, if if you were into vinyls, would you be like, ah, I want to get the Mother soundtrack on a vinyl? Yeah. I mean, it depends on how expensive it is. We do have Smash Bros. 
yeah, we don't have Smash Bros. And it's already yeah. in that. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big music collector, especially now. It's so easy on Spotify, and mm. e- even when before Spotify, I was all about downloading it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Torrents for life, am I right, guys? Um. <laughs> I know, I know, it's I know it's good to support artists and buy their albums and stuff like that. And I did that when I was a kid, but not anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's too hard to keep up like a video game collection <laughs> on top of a music collection on top of a movie collection. Like when you start getting into all those forms of media, it's just like, no, nah, I can't really mm. afford all that. I think if I went into a shop like a local shop and it was just like the Mother soundtrack, I'm like, oh, oh, oh that's cool, fifty bucks. Yeah, I'll buy that. Mm. I'm a big Nintendo fan. So, yeah, but importing it from Japan probably costs a fair bit. Yeah, that's if, right. If anyone picks it up, let us know. I'll show us some pictures of the back of the cover. That'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, I guess uh, leading into our uh, Game Awards 2019 talk. So, the Game Awards 2019 will have around 10 new game announcements. So, this is from Jeff Keighley. We have a bunch of brand new games being announced at the show. I think there are around 10 new games slash projects being revealed if you Whoosh. want to count uh, the things that... Count the things that no one has uh, heard about yet. As always, the internet has a lot of really bad information out there about what you think is at the show. But it sure is fun to read. Must be great being Jeff Keighley, just reading all these ideas. What's going to be there? He's like, he's just like there scrolling through Twitter. It's like, you got no fucking idea. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess uh, leading into our game, uh, game award discussion, um, Nintendo will be there in some capacity. Obviously, they're they're nominated for multiple games in different categories, and. I think um, there's a pretty obvious one of what, what Nintendo might announce. So, yeah. I think what we'll do is we'll go through uh, a pre- our predictions. We'll do three predictions each. One which we think, one we think will happen, like w- what we could w- what we could actually better pizza on. Another one we'll like to see happen, and it'll be a bit more out there, but it's worth giving a go. Then the third one will be just like pretty much bullshit and never happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like uh, Shigeru Miyamoto comes out in the go kart and does a backflip. It's <laughs> <laughs> maybe not quite that ridiculous, but all right, yeah, yeah. And I, I, th- I think it's, I think everyone can make a pretty safe and general prediction that you know another Super Smash Bros. DLC character will be announced there. Yep, I've, I mean, it's a pretty big win. Smash is nominated for Game of the Year since it missed the nominations last year. Um, it worked really well for him last time, and December this week falls in line really well with when the character will probably come out early next year in the first couple of months. Could come in at the Game Awards, you know what I mean? Yeah, could even. Could. Yeah. So it's already been a couple of months since Terry. You've got to think of it from... Yeah, it goes quick, doesn't it? Perspective, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and then they've got a... And they've got a whole DLC set too mm. that they're pushing out. So they're probably going to want to get this character out, whoever it may be, and that'll be it. Yeah, so I'll be genuinely shocked if uh, we just don't hear anything about a Super Smash Bros. character there. Mm. I think as like as the marketing team, it's kind of like we're nominated for Game of the Year for Super Smash Bros. We've got this we've got this character we need to start promoting. Are we gonna do it at Game Awards? I think it's just it'll be a real hard decision to be like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because why wouldn't you? I don't know why they wouldn't. No. So hmm best place for it and they put Joker there Joker obviously garnered a lot of hype and I think it's pretty obvious it's where it's going to head mm. yeah for sure yeah so uh, that would probably be yours too would it yeah 100% yeah. Um, I guess if I had to if I had to guess anything else um, I'm expecting either a Bayonetta 3 trailer or an announcement for Prime Trilogy. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, when it comes to those those things, uh, Bayonetta hasn't had any news in ages. Uh, Astral Chain's out by now, um, and a lot of people are obviously eagerly waiting news of Bayonetta three after Bayonetta two being such a damn good game. Mm-hmm. So I think that's possible. Uh, and yeah. Metroid Prime Trilogy, I feel like they're going to want to push that in there to fill that time slot that Metroid Prime four has now prolonged. 
Um, so it'd probably be a good idea to get Metroid out on the platform, get people going, you know, playing the games and hopefully leading up to what it is. So, yeah. And like Bay, Bayonetta 3, that's that history at the Game Awards. It got announced that that will be coming eventually by Reggie a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. He was talking to Jeff Keighley, um, just after Summer Water. Can't remember now, but yeah, I think, uh, that that could be safe if like we knew exactly like what where that game is on its development cycle. Like yep. if we were pretty certain it was going if it's going to come out next year, Bayonetta three would probably be a good little pop off at the Game Awards. I reckon would not, be, not pop yeah. off at your bum, but you know, <laughs> just something. Yeah, yeah. It's the end of the year. I feel like yeah. we've got Animal Crossing on the horizon. We know that's there. Oh fuck yeah! Oh, cool. And we're probably <laughs> just waiting for that one little last announcement before the end of the year and it'll be here. Hmm. So I think if you're going to go with the Smash Bros thing, that'll probably be the thing I go for is that Nintendo is going to announce uh, or the Nintendo is going to show off something from a game that is desired at the Game Awards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that'd be the best. Uh, that'd be the best thing. I can sort of uh, put out there in the same sort of generalization category because I think you've got a pretty safe bet there. Mm. And I think um, I think Prime Trilogy say say they did decide to release it next year, regardless of where Metroid Prime Four is. I think Prime Trilogy would be a good place to uh, a good a good thing to talk about at the Game Awards to show a trailer because yep. it's it's not it's not one of those things that's going to absolutely. Um, make or break a Nintendo Direct it's going to be one of those things in the middle which is like oh yes great I can play these games on my Switch that's right and yeah. the Game Awards typically like you've got a lot of um, AA developers announcing their games there and some obviously huge ones but you know you're not going to see th- um, huge things from say Bethesda or you know Sony's not going to show like one of their um well, actually, I think they did it's going to be a <laughs> they, fairly yeah. fairly quiet year I think in terms of like what will actually be there for the other two? Oh yeah, because yeah, it's le- leading up to next generation for those, and yeah, they're gonna be wanting to hold their cards to their chest for their big blowouts, and yeah, hmm. it'll it'll all be uh, stuff we've heard about from before, but new trailers probably. Yeah. Um, and then although he says ten for projects that are, haven't been revealed yet, so yes, but that's not pertaining just to those two companies either no no so I think um, like when it comes to that it'll be like Last of Us 2 trailers maybe some more stuff on Halo Infinite mm. yeah nothing on Halo Infinite they want to save that for this is Xbox Scarlet this is why you want it this is Halo bang yeah but I mean a trailer a, like another trailer wouldn't go astray is what I'm trying to say I guess Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't complain because Halo, Halo Infinite's had two trailers. One of them is a warthog going across a landscape, yeah. and the other one is Master Chief talking to a random guy. Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I feel like there will probably be something a bit more for Halo Infinite coming out, and then shooting something would be good. Yeah, well, yeah. for that game. <laughs> but then, um, you know, then the real big gameplay blow that will happen next year, E3. Yeah, mm. where it really happens. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess the, the the next lot of predictions for things that are a bit of a stretch that we could see happen and would like to see happen. Um, mine would be a not a similar tease, but like they did Breath of the Wild, I would love to see a bit of a tease or a bit of a demonstration or a trailer, maybe a bit more of a story trailer for Breath of the Wild too. I think that'd be a great place to sort of like build up a bit of hype, get people thinking about Nintendo instead of thinking about say PS5 in a couple of months for the announcement or whatever yep. really get people like starting to talk about Breath of the Wild even if it's more than 12 months away like, just like you know start start hyping up that game Yeah. For even if it's like two years away <laughs> Yeah. just like put little like even us on the podcast like the, the amount of um, examining you did of that trailer and like how much you got out of it if they do like a, if they do a similar thing, I guess it's kind of like Death Stranding how they did did the uh, story trailers. People are like, oh, what does this mean? It's kind of like it doesn't mean that much. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, I could do like a similar thing. Yeah, yeah, and I, I would really like to see that. I don't think we'll see any gameplay or anything, but like a bit more, a bit more context. Yeah, maybe like continue on that cutscene a couple of 
minutes after to give a bit more context of what's going on yeah yeah that'd be really cool yeah for sure um i guess mine would be um probably more pertaining to what you said for your first one and that is that we'll we'll get that character announcement but we'll also get an inkling into what in what's going to happen for the second half of the dlc like how much extra we're getting okay yeah yeah so mm. i think i feel like uh again game awards that is a place for it to happen that's where he so we sort of got the joker news we're going to get the big news that's where it's going to be obviously people want to know how many more characters we're getting post uh post fighters pass one so i think um they'll probably show us how many characters there are um and when to start expecting them roughly i think that'll probably sort of be the next yeah that's a, that's a big g- thing that's a great thought actually because they're basically saying here's the last character you got your 30 bucks worth yeah now we're after another 30 dollars this is why we need your extra 30 bucks yeah exactly so that's a good that's a good thought yeah that's right yeah so yeah. i feel like that's probably why like while that's while they're sort of having a hype moment they're also going to feed in that here's the next pay you have to pay for moment mm. <laughs> just to sort of keep it like if you're excited about this then you're going to be excited about this you know which the way uh, Smash does DLC and how much I love Smash Bros I'm like yeah take them just take it yeah no, just they could just take, take the money. money yeah just take it yeah give me anything literally I'll, like literally what we got for 30 bucks like awesome oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really good yeah 100% yeah. Um, did, actually just talking about Smash the other day did you see um, the post on social media about the one year anniversary for Smash Ultimate and they had all of the uh, DLC characters except for um, where I'd assume the uh, the next character would be they had Daisy mm. and pe- someone someone retweeted it and said hmm is this a hint of what might be happening and they put like you know Daisy's stance next to uh, Shantae and they're doing like a similar thing with you know the, the, the hands up in the air Oh, could we be seeing Shantae we might. being announced I mean, at that's, the Game Awards? That's the thing is when we've talked about it before and we've talked about it on this show before, um, Shantae's been on Nintendo platforms since the Game Boy. Yeah, the Game Boy Color, I think, was the first Shantae. Yeah. I'm not super familiar with old no, Shantae it, games, but it I might, think... It might even be Game Boy Pocket. Could be. Yeah. Could be both. Could be could put your Game Boy game in your Game Boy Color. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, um it uh yeah, it definitely um it it definitely goes a long way back with Nintendo and it's one of the longest running sort of almost indie developer titles mm. <laughs> sort of pushing forward, you know. Um it's been going for decades and decades at this point. So I feel like that could be It's a good candidate. Yeah. Well, we don't really have an. I think I feel like we've got a candidate for every candidate for everything, but non indie de, indie sort of candidate. Mm, and it's not it's not necessarily super indie like yeah, High Night or something either. But it no. is. Yeah, it started mm. off really indie, mm. and obviously it's made all the way up until now. Way forward, doing don't do a hell of a lot. That's you know, obviously. Yeah, person through the doors. And- <laughs> Whatever, maybe. Um, so, yeah, yeah, could be, could be. Would be cool. I'd like to see some more female characters in Smash. I know when they were, when the Wii U version was coming out and they were announcing characters, and it was like there was like a really nice slate of female representation in that roster. Yeah, it was like it was just like really nice to see. I'm like, yeah, we, we only got one female character in the Fighter Pass. Yeah, mm, only one. So we'll see. We'll see if there will be a second. Hmm. I mean, it'd be good to see. It'd be good to see. Maybe put a like. You, you got. You got. Who? Who was the? Who was the female? Kazooie. <laughs> Kazooie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we'll and see. Does that really count, though? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. But that was the joke. <laughs> it took okay. you a while to catch on. Yeah, yeah, that did. I was thinking like, oh yeah, there's probably someone. I can't think of them right now. But I'm like <laughs> trying to think about it. it was hard. We, every piece of DLC we've had up up till now is male, technically. I guess a piranha plant. Maybe not, but you know, it can be whatever you like. It can be whatever you like. Piranha plants. Don't plants change their sex during the times of their life? Yeah, maybe. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Do they have sexes? I don't know. Yeah, I think they do. Fertilize, fertilize yourself. I don't know. 
Well, yeah. Anyway, um, I think I think it's pretty safe to say we'll fe- see a female character next character. So Fairly Sean, safe. All right, lock it in. I think so. Uh, we've we've gone on with male characters for as long as you know it's pushed on. Mm. Even back in the Wii U version, it's like so. If they well, we got if, Mewtwo, Lucas, Roy. Mewtwo has doesn't have a gender. It's voiced by a male. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So if they don't announce a male character, Bryce is going to get right on the Twitter and he's going to get his social rage about it. He's going to yeah. get his social justice warrior um, Twitter handle ready to go trending. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. There's 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 been a lot of talk about it. The uh, Verbergen and something else. Verbergen. Another particular leaker have like been deconfirming characters. Okay. Because they know who the actual character is, and I'm like, I don't know who. Like, I, 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 I can't believe that in any capacity because they're just like, it's not Tracer from Overwatch. It's not uh, Shora from Kingdom Hearts. It's not this person. But what you know, it's kind of like okay, so you're deconfirming characters. You're making educated guesses that it's not going to be these characters, and people are sitting there like, oh, verb. Deconfirm Sora. I'm so upset. He's not going to be in the game. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, he's, he's making very educated guesses. <laughs> educated guess who? And it, and the educated guess yeah. is literally like Square Enix are fucking tired asses and probably won't let you have a third fucking representative. Simple, mm. done. You know, you've got Cloud. You've got the hero. Chances are that you're going to have fucking Sora as well. Are really low. So he's not there. Oh no. You know, maybe Donald Duck will make it in there. That'd be cool. Yeah, there you go, Donald Duck. Yeah, Disney. Yeah, yeah, it was in the game. Donald Duck's in the game. You know, yeah. You got Mickey. You, you got Goofy. I really like the Goofy movie. <laughs> Everybody loves the Goofy movie. Oh, I, like, I don't know where the fuck you were going with that. No, I just said I like the Goofy movie. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think I think like it's really hard to sort of just be like, well, deconfirming people. I think it's pretty obvious that when the time comes, we'll know. Especially since it's this week. Yeah. And this week is more than likely when it's going to happen. So yeah. And if it's already happened, you should have listened to this goddamn episode before. What are you listening to it now for? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. They really wanted to know that China news. So that's what's <laughs> going on. So I guess for the really, really wacky out there prediction, which I did not think about before doing the show, mm-hmm. um, I think it might be... I'm just thinking of it right now, actually. Um. I'm just going to say, before I think of something a bit more entertaining, um, Mario Odyssey 2. Won't see any... I think the next Mario game is due this year. Typically, apart from Mario Odyssey, because of obviously delays to get it on Switch instead of the Wii U, because why would you put it out on Wii U? Um, usually, the Tokyo team is on a three-year dev cycle for that game. Um, so, we're pretty much due next year for one. So, I think it's almost pretty safe to say we'll get one, but I'd Definitely don't think we'll see it at the Game Awards. It won't be teased until E3 even, I don't think. Yeah. It'll be shown. Yeah. They've got to focus on Zelda for now, mm. I think. They've just announced that people want more context. Yeah. And I know where from where I am. I think if they announce a Mario game, it's going to have nowhere near the amount of pop for the Zelda game would. Yeah, very mm. true. And it never used to be like that either. Mm. But... Yeah. Um. I think uh, Monolith Soft will reveal their next project via teaser. That's my ridiculous one. There you go. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah, because they are working on something in the background, like beyond uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Remaster, from what I understand. Um, and that's obviously going to be due out pretty early next year, like in the early quarter. And I can't wait for it. It's going to be great. But anyway, uh, I think this thing in the background will probably be um, teased there. That that that's my ultimate ridiculous one. Like, you know, might be a point two percent chance, but I feel like it's been a while since Xenoblade Chronicles two now that it's probably time for them to start talking. Hmm. Yeah, should yeah. be interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll be keen to see what it is too. Um, I guess just like all of these other predi- predictions we've made, I'm pretty, I'm like ninety eight percent sure there'll be a Smash character reveal there. 
Yeah. But I don't think they'll really do anything apart from that. Uh, yeah, probably. So, yeah. Mm. If, if we've got anyone's hopes up, yeah, yeah, don't bet on it. <laughs> yeah. Don't bet on a lot of things. I think, like, that's that's the moral of the story. It, it He says there's 10 games to be announced there. Um, chances of a lot of them being Nintendo or any of them at all are probably very, 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 very slim. Hmm. Um, but in saying that, considering the next generation of consoles is coming up, it's too early to start talking about games that are coming out for them. Um, yeah, it, there's there's wiggle room there for Nintendo. A little bit of wiggle room. And it's the last time of the year where they can announce that kind of stuff without it interfering with holidays and whatever it may be. We won't get another Direct until next year. It's yeah. 100% certain. That, yeah, and that's what I was going to bring up too. Like, Usually they have a Direct in, say, February or so. Yeah. So depending on what they decide to hold for that to make a big pop at the start of the year. And um, We know Reggie's going to be there. Obviously not a part of Nintendo anymore. Mm-hmm. But good friends with Jeff Keighley. They've yep. made that pretty pretty well known. Yep. I say on Twitter that uh, you can pay for an autograph with Reggie, and that goes to uh, towards a certain charity. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. And I, I wonder if we'll see um, Doug Bowser there in a significant role. Yeah. Because it, it is funny how uh, last year, how all three heads of um, the companies come out to say, like, we're all unified, we're all about gaming. And now two of those have um, either resigned or retired. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just Phil Spencer. Be interesting to see whether they do a similar thing with the the new heads of these companies there, or would be cool. Yeah, it'd be cool because like we we got like a little bit of a taste of like um, Doug Bowser in a in a public space at E three where he sort of did the um, I think it was at the end of the direct at E three where he sort of talked about oh these are great games coming and whatever, but that was pretty much it. But, oh, we got a bit of a taste there. Yeah. Oh, and he did the Bowser joke too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that too. So it'd be cool to see him like yeah on a natural stage. Yeah, t- get more of him. Yeah, I feel like that's the one thing that's sort of not really happened with Doug Bowser so far. Mm. Is him sort of coming coming to like a public event and sort of speaking more and being that sort of representative that we need him to <laughs> yeah. become. I know there's a real that that's it's really hard to fill the shoes of Reggie who. Oh yeah, became like an eternal meme. Everybody knows who Reggie Fils-Aimé is, uh, whether they're Nintendo fans or not. But like, um, it, he he kept up that appearance, and I feel like dropping that appearance now is a very silly idea, and it's very crucial to keep it going. Mm. It takes years to get that to that point, too. I I know yeah, that, so. but like, social appearances are good for that. Yeah, you know, yeah. The one, the one, the one picture of him with Mario and Luigi tied up with a GameCube controller cable. You know, that was funny. Ha <laughs> ha. I get uh, it. You're yeah. Bowser. Yeah, Bowser's uh-huh. bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, bros. Let's go through the nominations. All right, my friend. Uh, let's. All right, I've got him up. So we went a couple of weeks ago. We sort of went through them pretty quickly, but let's uh, discuss them a bit more in depth. So should we do game of the year first or last? It's first on the page, but it's the biggest award. Uh. Let's do it last. Oh, please. And right. then we'll just... We'll to the bottom. To the bottom it is. To the bottom. Yeah. All right. All and right. Uh, we'll just um, sort of have a quick discussion on those. So, from the first Nintendo one? Yeah. So, cool. so that starts at strategy game. Yeah. So, uh, in this in the strategy game category, uh, we have Fire Emblem Three Houses, um, which is going up against Age of Wonders, Planet Fall, Anno 1800... Total War, Three Kingdoms, Tropico 6, and Wargroove. Mm. And I count Wargroove as like a, a game we'll discuss because it is you know, available on Switch. That's right. As yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, so Fire Emblem Three Houses was a 10 out of 10 for me this year. Um, I absolutely love that game and it has revolutionized, revolutionized rather Fire Emblem in general uh, to be something a lot more deeper, a lot more thematic. And um, a lot more approachable as well for people who aren't particularly um, familiar with the game. Uh, has mm-hmm. an amazing soundtrack. Uh, the changes they made to the combat system are fantastic. The story is very intriguing. And honestly, it deserves that category for me 100%. I'm not a big strategy player, but Fire Emblem is one of those games where 
I will play strategy and enjoy it. But if you put me into any other one of these games, so for example, Tropico or Total War, I lose interest very quickly. I don't, I don't have the mind for micromanagement uh, to that level and degree. But Fire Emblem has a really good mix mm. of that. So, I mean, I, its chances, I think, are pretty decent, but I don't think it's going to take the win. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of hard because I'm obviously in the Nintendo bubble, so I've heard a lot about Fire Emblem. I've obviously played Fire Emblem. We yep. haven't played any of the others. But I haven't heard anything about any of the other games because I'm just not in that no. ecosystem. That's so right, yeah. It's hard to know, but I know like Total War and Tropico are like huge franchises. Oh, yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, absolutely huge. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what uh, yeah what happens with that. I know like Fire Emblem for me because I like anime. Um, I said I said uh, when Fire Emblem came out that Three Houses actually makes me a bit of a weeb. I'm not usually much of a weeb, <laughs> but I'm actually there like oh she, yeah, she's a bit cute. I better talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is weird. I don't know why I'm. You're just like walking over and pilot and game. It's like mm, my lady. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm playing as a girl as well, so I'm just like, eh, just. Oh. That still doesn't mean but Pilot can't be fat with a top hat, and you know pimples and no, <laughs> not the true neckbeard form. <laughs> yeah. My lady. Anyway, yeah. So this this, if if I was going to vote on this one, I'd go Fire Emblem, but it's just like it. I've got no experience. <laughs> Yeah. the other games whatsoever and I think this, that's going to be kind of a trend because I didn't play a whole lot of games outside of Switch this year Yep. so I uh, I can't say I'm like really got an in-depth knowledge of all these games yep yeah so the next one sports slash racing so for the best traditional and non-traditional sports and racing game so it's not a Nintendo game it's an Activision game by Beanox it's uh, Crash Team Racing uh, Nitro Field um, yeah, on I, Switch. Yeah, I I did enjoy it on Switch. It uh, the graphics were obviously downgraded. The resolution was locked at seven twenty, even on TV. Yep. So it was noticeable, but it was just it was just good fun. Before they um, it was a shame that sort of later on they added loot boxes. It didn't really like ruin the game or anything, but it was just like oh come on Activision, like if you had something here. Yeah. I thought you came out just with a good game. I was just like scratching my head, being kind of like pr- pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Then they add in loot boxes, and because it's already been rated, they couldn't put that into the factor of the rating. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was the idea. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, that's just bullshit. That's sneaky. Yeah, very sneaky. Because like you knew what you were gonna do this. Obviously, obviously, it's not something you just tripped over. Oh, market transactions are in it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, a bit disappointing. Yeah. In that, but it's a solid kart racing game. Um, I know like a a fair few people like oh it's better than Mario Kart people have their preferences depending on what they grew up with PlayStation 1 or Nintendo 64 yeah um, but yeah solid racing game it's going up against Dirt Rally 2.0 uh, uh, foot, so eFootball Pro Evolution Soccer 2020 F1 19 and FIFA 20 so it's kind of like hmm, kind of apples and oranges there yeah <laughs> but um, yeah I'm sure FIFA's pretty good I'm sure it's probably pretty similar to 2020 if we're talking about the switch version probably wouldn't be on that list no yeah <laughs> it was actually it's definitely not on that list well uh with, with crash i didn't actually play nitro field um, oh, the remake or the the, the remake. original the remake, remake. Oh, yeah. Well, i yeah. played the original yeah i was about to say yeah um i i i enjoyed the original i thought it was great and it's got a lot of uh diddy kong vibes for me yeah but uh we need to bust it out then if you haven't played it. For, for, for them uh, PlayStation players who listen to this podcast, there's a reason that didn't continue as far as what Mario Kart did. Take that in your notebook. That's right, fight me. Anyway. <laughs> because um, Sony lost the rights and Activision didn't do anything with it. That's right, That's yes. why, that's pretty much That's why. exactly right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> until they're like, but still, but still until, Mario Kart. Until mm. they're like, oh, Crash actually sold fucking well. Oh, better remake that one too. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, so moving on to the next section. Oh, this is yours, man. Yep. Uh, we'll uh, we'll go one by one, my friend. Um, we have score and music. So in the score and music category, uh, we have as our representative, Cadence of Hyrule. Yeah. And on a, I don't have to say anything more. Cadence of Hyrule is amazing. Uh, the remixes of the Zelda tracks are absolutely fantastic. Moving to the beats, fantastic. It's got that Crypt of the Necro dancer vibes and. 
you know, it's it's genuinely a the best Zelda spin off, um, I reckon. Mm, yeah, well, one hundred percent. Without even thinking about it, it's without surely the, up there. Yeah, one hundred percent. And it's going up against uh, Death Stranding, Devil May Cry Five, Kingdom Hearts Three, and Sayonara Wild Hearts. Mm-hmm. So, um, it has some really tough contenders here. Yeah, this is a very strong category. It is a very strong category. <laughs> um, Death Stranding. I have not played Death Stranding yet, but I've heard great things about the music that's on my Christmas list yes. Death Stranding yeah, yes so. um, and I'm sure I'll play it one day but right now I'm not interested in Walking Simulator 2019 um, I'm, yes I know there's there's more to it for anybody that is angry about me saying that I know there is more to it but uh, yeah. it's Norman Reedus not right now yeah that's right uh, <laughs> Devil May Cry 5 I finished and I loved and it was a fantastic return to form and it had an awesome soundtrack and I loved it so much um, so yeah, there's that. Kingdom Hearts three. I'm a very hangry, ang- hangry, angry, <laughs> angry man about Kingdom Hearts three. Kingdom Hearts three is very depressing. Fuck, it makes me hungry. The the new tra- <laughs> the new trailer got leaked for the DLC, and it made me even more mad about the game because the stuff that they left out of the game they put in the DLC, like all the Final Fantasy stuff, everything. That's what you got to do, man. You got to just the the extra playable characters like. Kyrie and all that they put that all in the extra DLC I've already gotten rid of my Kingdom Hearts is it paid DLC? yes <laughs> and I'm not buying it again uh, not unless I see it on a shelf for 10 bucks then I will and then I'll play the DLC and fucking sell it again Kingdom Hearts 3 was an absolute disappointment for me but I can't nail on about its soundtrack its soundtrack was great it was uh, fantastic you know Disney musical scores you can't really go wrong no they're really good yeah. um, and the sound design in general was pretty pretty good. Um, so, that's strong enough in itself. But Sayonara Wild Hearts, I know nothing about. Mm. I played Sayonara Wild Hearts because it came out on Apple Arcade. Yep. And that was one of the games I was most keen... Well, I think it was the first game I should play because I was most keen to play that. Um, I was keen to play it on Switch, but it was free on my phone and on my computer. So, I went with it there. And yeah, it's a really, really amazing game. Just like the... The visuals, how they sort of um, work with the music and you sort of like, I guess you kind of describe it as an endless runner, but yeah, that is really not giving it uh, the credit it deserves. Yeah, It's like you're going through it and you sort of just, it, it just really like puts you in the mindset of like being there. Kind of like Journey does with its musical score and yep. visuals and yeah. So really incredible game. So it definitely deserves um, its nomination there. Absolutely. All right, we'll move on to the next one. So, this one. So, role-playing games. There is no Nintendo game or there is, no, there is Nintendo no Nintendo Switch game. game there. There is not. Uh, but I do want to give a mention to it really quick because a game I love isn't there. Uh, mm-hmm. So, in that category is Disco Elysium, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, The Outer Worlds, and Final Fantasy fourteen. Monster Hunter World is a fantastic Monster Hunter game. Uh, if you have a platform to play it on, you should play it. I really wish this game would come to Switch. Um, and I haven't played the DLC yet, but I can only imagine it would just be adding on to something more great. Um, hard as nails, apparently. Hard as nails, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But it is a absolutely fantastic version of Monster Hunter, really new player-friendly to begin with. Um, and it helps you build up and get into good spaces. DLC is not coming out until next year for PC, so that's when I get to play Iceborne. But... I'm glad to see that it's still hanging there because it is really a fantastic game. And Final Fantasy XIV deserves a lot of love for literally releasing the highest rated ever MMO expansion uh, this year with Shadowbringers. In the history of MMOs, there has never been a higher rated MMO expansion than Shadowbringers. And as somebody that plays that game, I can tell you that it is in probably the best spot the game has been in a very very long time um so final fantasy 14 um would probably get my vote there just because i played the shit out of it um but i just wanted to make mention to that category because there's a lot of good games in that category um the outer worlds especially um taking a cake for a lot of people in that category i'm yet to play it but i'm very keen to play it Mm. yeah likewise i'm that's going to be like a Christmas time game for me too. Yeah. I've got it downloaded. Just need to play it. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not really going to go over this, but just ongoing game. So this is awarded to the game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. So it's Apex Legends, Destiny 2, uh, Final Played Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Tom Clancy's um, Roblox... <laughs> Rainbow, Rainbow uh, Six, Six Siege. Siege. I don't know why I couldn't get it out, but basically Fortnite's the only one on Switch. I can I can sum it up real quick if you want. No, we don't have to because it's not on Switch. Fortnite's on Switch. Yeah, no, but yeah, we'll sum up Fortnite. Okay, so Fortnite Fortnite went through a seasonal change um, to Chapter Two. Yeah. Um. So they had the big explosion. That was a big thing for like a whole week. Um. That was really cool. And marketing. they refreshed it. It was really cool marketing. It was really good. And. Uh, it was really fun to get back into and play play again for a couple of weeks. I haven't touched it in a little bit, um, but I'm very uh, very happy. I was very happy with it when I last played it, which is better than what I could say uh, within the like last six months of the first ch- chapter, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I guess well done, Epic. You're still sort of really killing it with uh, Fortnite. I think it's probably got this category up and up and handled. I would say. Uh, Apex Legends kind of fell off the radar. Um, I'm not really sure what happened. I, I think they just kind of threw balancing out the window, and people started to get frustrated. Yeah. What What sort of happened was it came out that you know Fortnite developers at Epic are sort of grinding and uh, you know crunching to get this content out, which is like, which is you know pretty obvious with how much content they're getting out. Yeah. And at Respawn, it, they made a statement basically saying, you know, we're not going to put our workers under that stress just to keep this game going so I think they're doing the best they can at an ethical level yeah whereas Fortnite is just like absolutely crunching the shit out of it yeah which is you know I feel like I don't think that's what's affecting Apex though I think yeah I think there's a lot of underlying things with Apex that need to be fixed that they're not addressing yeah and that might be just because you know the man hours and the people aren't there to cater for it but and that was the same thing with destiny 2 as well before they got uh, released from the clutches of activision um they're going through a big change at the moment mm. most of destiny 2 is free um and i think the only thing you need to buy now is shadow keep to keep up and that's that's it and so hopefully bungie can sort of keep that afloat again final fantasy 14's there great fantastic that, don't have to say anything that'll more. be your vote yeah it's one i voted for it in all three categories that it's in and um tom clancy's rainbow six siege Really, if you want to play a competitive shooter, I feel like it's still one of the best ones you can get into. Um, it's very team-based. It's very fun. Uh, if you like tactical situations, there's a lot of ways to approach each, each situation. Um, I'm surprised it's lived as long as it has. I was about to say, it's pretty cool, but it's still there. It's it's <laughs> still doing really well, but that's because it's a really good game and it shows. Mm. Um, the last um, the last real Rainbow Six experience that people sort of latched onto was uh, Vegas 2. Um, and that didn't last very long um, simply because it, it wasn't designed to last very long and neither was this really but they kept updating it and it's really sort of come yeah, a long way when it initially came out it, it was you know pretty ordinary but they just it kept it it was very it. ordinary yeah. yeah but they fixed it up and they made a really good part of it which is uh, yeah mm. good so well done I suppose yeah. yeah so next up is narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game mm-hmm. so the first one nominated is Pokemon Sword and Shield Next one is Luigi's Mansion. Uh, just kidding. Those games don't have very good stories. Uh, there is no Nintendo game on the no Nintendo Switch game nominated for narrative. Um, I know like a lot of people didn't like Pokemon Sword and Shield story, but uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was all right. Yeah. Could be even worse. Uh, definitely not in the narrative category because... No, no, let's just be fair. Pokemon Sword and Shield didn't get in because the cutoff date was the 15th of November and uh, Sword and Shield came out. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that uh, that really big twist in Sword and Shield. I think that would have got the uh, the, the judges oh, yeah. just go. Oh my god, this story is crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you kidding me? What's going on in this game? It's just nuts. <laughs> uh, the next one is multiplayer game. <laughs> the next one is multiplayer game, and uh, there is one in there that deserves a very nice golf clap. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. when I, when I say it, you get a golf clap. Oh aren't yes, you? oh yes. I've all right. So one. first of all, we got Apex Legends. Uh, then we have Borderlands 3, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we mm. have Tom Clancy's The Division 2, and we have Tetris 99. Oh, well done. Well done, Tetris 99. Well done. Honestly, well done. Yeah, yeah. Like, making Tetris that relevant again that it pushes itself all the way to the Game Awards. All of these games is like, yeah, you get your loot, you shoot some bastards in the head, 
and you just have a good time with your squad. You know what I'm saying, boys? Yeah, and you pay $100 AUD for it. Tetris 99, you pay for a year of subscription, you get it for free. Yeah, so you remember that game you played on the Game Boy? Well, here it is again. With 99 other players. Yeah. What a novel concept. <laughs> and it's brilliant. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't play much of it um, because I'm shit at it and I get frustrated very quickly with Tetris if I can't mm. if I can't win. <laughs> so, um, it's like pinball for me. Uh, but <laughs> You get frustrated at pinball too, do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. If, you know, if I, lo- if I fucking lose a combo or something, oh, man, I'm mad. Oh, you flip but that table. You're fucking... Tetris 99 fantastic game yeah. um, it has some very stiff competition I've played it every single one of these things except Tom Clancy's The Division 2 but I could imagine how D- The Division 2 would have went because I played the first one yeah I don't think there's anyone passionate enough to sort of vote over these games no but what what Tetris 99 have done like it came out it was like very bare bones it was just Tetris and uh, play against 99 other players yeah but they sort of figured out that they had something special. I don't think Nintendo sort of expected this to like blow up. And it did, yeah. yeah. So they started they started adding DLC to it. You can play it offline. You got other modes. They started doing themes, like oh, even like limited themes. So it makes you log on on that weekend to make sure you get that theme. Yeah. And it did one for Pokemon Sword and Shield the week before those and games come out. And that got me to go back to it to make I sure it. I got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you missed it. Yeah, God. Oh, yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but no, no, but no. yeah, there's it's um really kept going and just with you know all the DLC yep. and everything for it, it's doing a really good job and it's something I enjoy. Just uh, I've got it downloaded on my Switch Lite and obviously I'm a normal Switch, but Switch Lite mm-hmm. is where I like ah I feel like playing Tetris. Pick it up, yeah, online only, so I don't have to worry about the uh, the online sort of registering one for my secondary console or anything like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good fun. Really enjoy it. Absolutely. Um, but it's it's contenders. I mean, Borderlands Three. Uh, Still ongoing, Borderlands 3, Borderlands is Borderlands. I feel like it's one of the ultimate co-op experiences you can sort of have. Um, I know that it's probably still not as well received as what 2 was, but it's it's here for a reason. Um, again, Apex has its problems. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare um, has been an absolute time sink for me, uh, especially with all the free content that's sort of coming they've got a battle pass system now to sort of sustain instead of the season pass which means that if an update comes out and there are new maps it gives me a reason to go back and play you know uh so even if i put it down for a week they're like a new map's coming out next week you're like ah guess i'm playing you know so yeah cod's been really good um so far it does it does have problems i'm not i'm not going to deny that it uh doesn't have any because it does has a few problems but it has been a pretty good experience overall. Uh, overall, I think uh, Tetris 99 is going to struggle in this category, but mm. it does deserve the slot. Well it's just done. So, it's just so different. It is, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Which is good. But but well done, Tetris. Absolutely deserve to be there. Mm. So, uh, mobile game. For the best uh, game playable on a de- dedicated mobile device. So, you've got Call of Duty Mobile, Grindstone, Sayonara Wild Hearts, Sky, Children of the Light... And what the golf? So you got some. Uh, I like the variety in this. And um, as far as Switch goes, you got uh, Sarnia Wild Hearts, um, and that's it actually. Um, the rest is um, Apple Arcade or Call of Duty Mobile, which is on both um, iOS and Android. Which is a good version of Call of Duty. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really it's surprising. actually good. Yeah, it looks ridiculous to have um actually like Call of Duty that game looks. It's it's really yeah, it's actually half a half decent Call of Duty game, which is something I thought I'd never say about a mobile phone game. Hmm. That is Call of Duty. Yeah. Never like I would have thought it'd just been absolutely brutal out the arse with microtransactions and shit like that, but so far it hasn't been. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. sort of a uh, surprising coming from Activision. I'm not uh What's the catch? What's going on? What's going to be implemented in the future? I don't trust you. What's going on? <laughs> but um, I know, like, obviously, Sayonara Wild Hearts talked about that. Really fun game. Really great game. I recommend it to anyone who's uh, got a Switch and doesn't have an Apple device because on, you know, Apple Arcade, you'd be able to get it a lot cheaper. Um, Sky Children of the Light is a game by that game company. I played it a bit on my iPhone. Uh, it's, it's really, it's a really beautiful game, especially for mobile. And it's sort of, it's similar to Journey how it has uh, other players interact with you and you can sort of see them going around the world. Yeah. And like the music's beautiful as you're like going from place to place and it's it's a free game that has microtransactions and I haven't like really dived into the microtransactions but it's a really it's a really great game. I'll probably recommend it to anyone but you know it's free. Just yeah. go and download it. 
yeah. taking the atmosphere. And what the golf, I haven't gotten around to that on iPhone yet, but um, hearing a hearing or well, just watching a little bit of like trailers and that, and hearing like Dylan Blight who gave it a really good review on um, on the website over there. It's just like a really wacky golf game for people that hate golf because yeah. you think like oh it's a it's a golf game but you're pretty much um playing golf with any object and putting it into yeah. any hole and yeah just ridiculous so it's looks very fun <laughs> yeah so it's a game i would like to see come to switch if it hasn't already i haven't been playing that close attention it could have just slipped into the switches e- e-shop and i've got no idea but yeah yeah and at grindstone i know that's like a very um addictive sort of mobile s game without the microtransactions so yeah heard lots of good things about that too yeah, so I'll probably go sign our Wild Hearts just because it's that's the game where I first saw. I'm like, oh yes, getting that. Yeah, and it's lived up to it, and yeah, it's the only game on Switch too. Nope. <laughs> so next category is independent game. Oh yes, this is a good one. Yeah, so uh, we've got Baba Is You, uh, we've got Disco Elysium again, uh, we've got Katana Zero, uh, we have Outer Wilds, Ooh. and we have Untitled Goose Game. Oh. No, that wasn't bad. Bad honk. <laughs> yeah, that was better. Yeah. So, um, with this, I think uh, the obvious picks would probably be Katana Zero and Untitled Goose Game. Um, I well, feel well, like f- for Switch, there's Outer Wilds there too. I don't think you can just what. I'm talking about like out of this category, what would probably win? Mm. I think Outer Wilds would take it just for how popular that game is. Maybe, but so is Untitled Goose Game. Yeah, we're true. Yeah, like you want to talk about world renowned repeal, Untitled mm. Goose Game is probably going to take this. If people are like, oh, well, that's f- even if people are like, oh, that was a good trailer, that was fucking funny. Just click vote. <laughs> there, there are companies making knockoff, knockoff goose socks. Yeah, just the to socks, literally, yeah. just to literally cash in on the fact that Untitled Goose Game was so successful. Mm. Like, um, it- oh, out of wilds. Oh, I did the thing where I got him confused. Fuck. Yeah. Out of worlds, out of wilds, fuck. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I just looked at the developer. I'm like, oh, no, that's not. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, Untitled Goose Game or Katana Zero. Katana Zero, um, I haven't played yet because we had that whole fiasco of, oh, you're not getting it. <laughs> so, then we did. Um, then we did. Yeah. So, I haven't played it yet. Um, and I've hardly touched Untitled Goose Game as well, even though I've been meaning to. Um, but uh, I think. It says enough when the entire world falls in love with an asshole goose um, that Untitled Goose Game is probably going to take that. Well done, House House. You created a phenomenon. Everybody in the world now loves geese. You did a good oh, job. But, you know, in reality, geese are awful friggin' birds. Yeah, they're they, fucking... They they're... attack you. You can't really eat them. <coughs> Their eggs aren't great. Like, they're just a... Just a pretty vile little animal, really. Um... <laughs> I think my pick out of these would be Katana Zero. I haven't played it through to completion, but similar to Dead Cells, it's a its gameplay just feels so fluid and really fun to play. Basically, each level is a certain scenario, and you're using your skills and your rewind ability to be able to get through the levels sort of stealthily or do kills without getting killed. You can get just like hit and the, you're dead and the level's over. Yeah. When you instantly flash back to the start and you've got to do it all again yep. so it's a little bit like a puzzle game and bit action sort of orientated as well yeah um, yeah lot, lots of fun I've been meaning to go back to it I've played like through a few like a good I played like three hours or so of it I'm like yeah oh, this is really fun and then like, that was on PC then I got the Switch code and I didn't hadn't touched it on Switch yet because I'm kind of like oh should I play on PC should I play on Switch and I just never played it on anything yeah but yeah just from like first impressions like the game could go to crap after that but which I don't think it does but yeah just a lot of fun to play mm-hmm. and Bubba is You that's a that's a game that's like literally outside the box yeah where you've got to like it's like puzzles I haven't played it myself but like hearing about it I'm like oh, I need to play that and it's I put it on my wish list on the eShop Yeah, yeah. Looking forward. I, I haven't played it enough or seen enough of it to actually like talk about it. But yeah, um, yeah. I haven't played a Disco Asylum. Oh. Elysium. Elysium. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You keep calling it Asylum. Yeah, I don't know why. It's, <laughs> it's, it's obviously doesn't say that. It's close. It's close enough to it. Yeah. It's alright. I understand. Yeah, I've uh, I've got something in my head, <laughs> which will not let me read. 
All right, Ross, let's move on before this uh, becomes too awkward. All right. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. We, we probably should push on. We've got we've got heaps to go, so we'll try to take a little less time on the things that are unimportant. Yep, so... Well, not, um, you know what I mean. I just want to talk... You're not going to skip games for impact? No, games for, games for impact's there. All right, cool. So, yeah, games for impact for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. So, we've got King Concrete Genie... Gris. Gree. Or grey or Gree. It's not grey. It is grey. It is not. Pinot Gree. Motherfucker. It's grey. It's French. Gree. Oh fine, whatever. I've heard so many pronunciations for it, and I have not heard that one. God damn it. It's definitely grey. It has to be. Anyway. Because people are like, oh no, it says grey. It's French that's what it says in French. Like, oh my god, just I don't know. Uh, kind words, life is strange too, or sea of solitude. Uh, Gree is the only one I've uh, played. Really beautiful game. Um, art style is fantastic, and uh, I've played it with headphones, and the music is re- just so atmospheric. It's really, really impressive. Um, have you played any of these ones? No, <laughs> actually, yeah. Um, um, if any, if if there were any of them that I was actually going to play, I suppose it'd probably be Life of Strange Two. But I haven't even gotten through the first one just yet. I'm mm. still on like episode four, so yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'm not done yet. Um, I'm probably going to get into Life of Strange Two now that all five episodes are out, so I haven't played them all yet. Concrete Genie's one I want to get. Yep, and looks dope. I never heard of Kind Words, but looking at it here, it looks really cool. Yep. And Sea of Solitude, um, it was one of the sea of, sort of EA uh, indie games they were funding funding at the start of the year. Yep. And I uh, kind of forgot how that went, but obviously it's here, so it must be good job. Right. Must be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, next up is game direction. We have Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil Two, Sekiro, and Outer Wilds, which means that uh, it's kind of a dead category for us. Mm-hmm. Um. I would probably say Sekiro or Control will probably take that. Control's nominated for so many things this year. Yeah. Like, so many things. Uh, but, obviously, none of them are really important to Nintendo, so we'll press on. Uh, the, the next one is Fresh Indie Game, presented by Subway. So yeah, I just noticed that. Love. You want to take that one? <laughs> okay. So, recognising new, independ- new independent studio that released its first game in 2019. So, oh God, there's a lot of names here. I'm going to butcher. So... If- um, za um or was it za slash za za slash um? Is that um, just how you would say? It? Or za slash um? I'm just yeah. gonna get, get you to say those. I'm gonna okay, I'm, fine. I'm gonna embarrass okay. myself, Ross. I'm gonna be blushing in audio form. So fresh indie game, recognizing new independent studio, released its first game in 2019. We have za um for Disco Elysium, Namada Studio for Gree, um, Dead Toast Entertainment for My Friend Pedro. Uh, Mobius Digital for The Outer Wilds, Meg- Mega Crit for Slay the Spire, and House House for Entitled Use Game. So, yeah. I think my bias goes to House House just because they're Australian. I'm yeah, like, good too. on them. They made a yeah. big game that really well, broke considering out. they come to Australia... Well, not... Considering they are from Australia, where games from here don't break out a huge lot, but we've had like Hollow Knight and then this... Mm. that says something that's like two games that have come off the ground from here that have just absolutely exploded so I feel like yeah Untitled Goose Game not even just the fact that it's Australian but the fact that it managed to find success from such a small market standing yeah and yeah. like Dead Toast Entertainment for my friend Pedro my friend Pedro was a lot of fun yeah just yeah. like it's like really fun just doing the acrobatics and sort of doing the trick shots and with all the different sticks and buttons like it, it, it got you to do a fair bit at some points and it, t- it teaches you really well as you're progressing through the levels yep. and once it teaches you in the next level it's like alright now use the skills we just taught you and you pull them off and you're like doing trick shots and you're sort of like just missing their bullets and like headshotting them it's a lot of fun and it looks really cool when you're actually watching someone else too yeah so yeah cool cool so some really um yeah, really interesting uh, nominations there because mm. like you know a lot, a lot of people say like oh, it's pretty a pretty weak year and you know to some extent it's like oh yeah there's not some like big hype titles necessarily we're waiting for like you know um, Final Fantasy 7 Remake and like big games for next year but mm-hmm. with all the indie games like it's it's still like a really um, quite a special year I think yeah for sure so the fighting game the fighting game uh, category Bryce I think I think we know where we're going with this one yep so 
just 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 to put it out in there I suppose yeah just put it out there Smash Bros is up against Samurai Showdown Mortal Kombat 11 Jump Force and Dead or Alive 6 and it really doesn't have much competition except for maybe Mortal, Mortal Kombat 11 uh, but even then I don't think Mortal Kombat 11 will beat Smash Bros Samurai Showdown I hadn't even heard of before I read this list um, Jump Force has been very problematic <laughs> since it came out uh, it's very very split on who actually likes it and who doesn't even though it's a very very beautiful looking anime fighter I, it's definitely not going to take the cake and Dead or Alive 6 I'm a Dead or Alive fan I love Dead or Alive uh, as a fighting game hmm. um, and me and my partner have played those games as they've come out since 4 so 4 come out around the time that we got together um, so we've played them we've played them since 4 but I have not even bothered to touch Dead or Alive 6 uh, mainly because they went through a new marketing strategy of giving you the game for free and then paying for the characters oh, okay, and everything else on top yeah. of it. And in, it's good in retrospect because you can play the game for free um, you with just, just the characters yeah. you want. But at the same time, it's one of those games I'd just like to buy the full thing and just play it. Because you've also yeah. got to purchase a story separate too, which is mm. kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah, we should have just had the option. Yeah. Like, just buy the disc. But it, it is a good option if... Uh, if you just want to play it on the cheap, yeah. If if you if you got a friend over, you're like I'll tell you what, let's just download this game because it's free. Yeah, and you know we'll spend a bit of money. We'll buy a character each just to. You can still play online like. and all that, and then just like buy a character you want to play, mm. and then get good with that character and pretty much just play that character if you really want to. But yeah, it came to a, it came to a kind of a silent release. Dead or Alive Five was supposedly going to be the last one, and then Six came out, so. Yeah, it would definitely come down to yeah, Mortal Kombat 11 or Smash because Mortal Kombat 11 that was the best selling game you know for you know, a couple of months after it came out so yeah. that that game's done really well and yeah, Smash Ultimate don't have to say too much about that yeah pretty much yeah so this is now the next category Bryce the, f- the family game category this is where we can have a bit of a conversation because they're all <laughs> Nintendo games <laughs> yeah they are all Nintendo games but I feel like we should still probably keep it on the short side of conversation because that's a lot of Nintendo games that is so for the best uh, appropriate for family p- play family irrespective game, or uh, irrespective of genre or platform yeah so, yeah sure <laughs> yeah so look yeah of platform yeah you're right um, family game by the way yeah Mm. Well, we just mentioned three Ring Fit Adventure Super Mario Maker 2 Super Smash Bros Ultimate or Yoshi's Crafted World the question is what do you think will take the cake hmm. I don't to be honest I'm not sure Smash Bros Ultimate will take this one I th- yeah I think uh, Super Mario Maker 2 will yeah, me take too. it I think that will get the votes me too so um I suppose we'll just go on them in order. Luigi's Mansion 3 is an amazing game, but I don't understand why it's necessarily in the family game section. It is literally two-player at best. Um, So, yeah, it's not very family if you're only playing with two people. Um, It's um, it's a good co-op experience by far, and it's definitely one of the best in in Nintendo's absolute best lineup for the Switch. Mm. Uh, It's fantastic. I, I I don't think family necessarily means you need, like, the dad, the mum, and the two kids playing. I think it could be just like, you know, good for a little one or a younger kid to play. So I think, I think I've think i heard lots of stories, like heartwarming stories about Luigi's Mansion 3 being played with like partners or yeah. you know, f- friends and that. So I think it's, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty suitable to be there. Ring Fit Adventure? Neither of us have played it. Uh, the only person I can actually go to to ask about Ring Fit Adventure is Eric Zarch and... Yeah, otherwise, I yeah, don't, don't have much to say. Mm, Eric's uh, looking ripped, though, <laughs> so it must work. Yeah, 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 guess so. Don't well the, done, Eric. Yeah, that's probably, <laughs> that's probably the one I put at the bottom because it's like, yeah. I know, I know, like a, <laughs> I know a family can play it, but it's not family like I'll. No. I'd imagine these, like, a family playing these other games. I couldn't imagine a dad being like, all right, son. Let's play Ring Fit Adventure. Yeah, the kid's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, do we have to? Do we yeah, pretty much. I want to sit on my bum. And play a video game. Mm. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2. Enough said. 
um you can do a lot with super mario maker 2 and a bunch of people um have a lot of have a lot of fun playing it you know uh they have uh at avcon our local convention i guess uh they do a whole panel on mario maker um that goes for about two hours long where people just try to make a level in as quick as time as possible and the person next to them has to try and complete it within you know within the time frame mm. and I made a mistake I thought let's put bob bombs everywhere and get through it mm, bad decision Drew hmm, that's yeah. right yeah so yeah smash ultimate enough said we'll talk about that later yep. and Joshi's craft a world yeah um you know I put Luigi's Mansion over that as far as like a, a two player game yeah um, I, I think um girlfriend reviews have you ever watched that channel before yeah yeah i think i think she put it pretty eloquently that it's like fun cutesy and it's it's good just for like a general romp but there's a lot of things that sort of get in the way of making it just a fun fun game especially when you're playing it in co-op like just jumping near your partner and landing on their backs is fucking frustrating why isn't there like just a button option to saddle up on the other yoshi and you know go for a ride and you chuck the eggs and yeah there's just some like little things with Yoshi's Crafted World where like it's great if you just want a cute little adventure but as a co-op experience it's not an absolute necessity to enjoy it's kind of more of a hindrance Mm. yeah from getting what you want to do yeah like I haven't even played it two player but it's just like I'd rather play Luigi's Mansion or because you know with Luigi's Mansion you'll be actually like oh how do we do this and you're sort of thinking about it talking to each other yeah Yoshi's Crafted World it's like jump on me it's like Okay, then you just will go through the level. Yes, we did it. We got a lot of the collectibles. Not all of them, but we'll get them next time, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So I'm s- there's a lot of like um, esports categories we can just skip right over. Thank God. <laughs> audio design. No Nintendo game there because the audio sucks, apparently. God, no one puts their headphones on when they play the Switch handheld. Maybe that's the reason. So the, the, next, uh, the next one, which we can talk about Nintendo-wise, is uh, art direction. For outstanding and creative or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. So control, dress down, death stranding. Uh, Gree, because I'm going to say like that to not upset Bryce. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Shut Sekiro, up. Shadows Die Twice. And The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And I don't know. I really like uh, Link's Awakening, the uh, art direction. I don't think I'll put it over Sayonara Wild Hearts or Gree. Um, I don't think I'll put it over Sayonara Wild Hearts, Gree, Sekiro. Yeah, I think I think I'd probably put all three of those over Link's Awakening in terms of like, mm. yeah. And and I, I do really like the art style oh, they use with Link's Awakening. I do too. Yeah. And when they first announced, it's like, oh look, it, like it looks like a real life like little diorama. Yeah, um, I think with the art, art direction, it does get um, a little bit ruined by sort of the blurring around the edges, which we talked about when we first played the game. Um, so that kind of ruins it a little bit. But yeah, hmm. oh well. Yeah, so I'd probably, I'll probably pick Gree for this category. To be honest, yep, I think that's what I'll go for. Uh, cool. So next is an uh, action adventure. Um, so one Nintendo title in this one it is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening again going up against Borderlands 3 Control Death Stranding Resident Evil 2 and Sekiro Shadows Dead Twice so pretty much exactly the same as it was before um, and to be honest I think it has more of a chance in this category than it did the last one um, but I think either Control or Sekiro will probably take this one yeah I, I can't say Link's Awakening Especially for exactly what it says here. So, for combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. Obviously, Legend of Zelda has great puzzle solving. Link's Awakening doesn't have the best puzzles in the series. Yeah. But traversal and combat, you know, this game doesn't beat the other games at all. No. Like, you got control, which, you know, think of that about the abilities you get in that game where you're literally, like, flying around, shooting things, and, like, it's just Borderlands 3 even Death Stranding to some some point like later in the game when you get more abilities Resident Evil 2 and obviously I reckon Sekiro probably from what I've seen would be would take the yeah the I think so with. too yeah I really need to play that game but I just haven't yet because I believe that one 
really does combine combat with traversal and puzzle solving puzzle solving being how you take down each enemy and everything and yeah that's right yeah so yeah. I think I wouldn't yeah as much as we're like oh, I like Zelda I wouldn't vote for Link's Awakening in these categories I don't think it holds up quite enough yep hmm so, action game. For the best game in the action genre, focus primarily on combat. So, Apex Legends, Astral Chain, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Devil May Cry 5, Gears 5, and Metro Exodus. Um, so, there's, for me, it's uh, Devil May Cry 5, Astral Chain, and I've played um, Apex Legends, but I sort of, I sort of, when I think action game, I sort of, yeah, I do think more or less of like you know the platinum games, you know the Capcom games. I don't really think about the first-person <laughs> shooters. Yeah, but as as good as Apex Legend feels to play. Um, I don't know what I would go for over Astral Chain or DMC Five. Um, I was really impressed with Astral Chain, sort of like the abilities you get, how you can like use your. Oh, what do you call your uh, partner again? Your monster? <laughs> Forgotten now. Yeah? Anyway, you, your monster, say. It doesn't matter exactly what it's called, but how you sort of like, you can catch your enemies in the chain, yeah. wrap around them, and sort of like use the uh, right stick for doing all those maneuvers. And I thought it was really impressive. And it's quite easily one of the best looking games on Switch. Really breathtaking yeah. with the, the, art, the art style behind it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I haven't finished it yet, but it's, it's a game of I must finish because I think it's excellent. I'm I'm the same. I haven't finished it yet either. Um but I have finished Devil May Cry 5 and I think these two are going to be the main contenders for this. Um Devil May Cry 5 is again a re- a really good carry on from number 4. Um you know what? I still don't think I'd probably hold it as high as DMC. Oh, right, yeah. Which is surprising. Um, like, there is a lot more variety there in terms of what you're doing and stuff like that, but I feel like the combat in DMC was really fluid and switching between axe, scythe, and the sword was really neat. Um, but in Devil May Cry 5, instead, you've just got three different characters that work differently, um, which kind of detracts from it a little, especially when you're playing as V. When you're playing as V, um, it's mostly just your companions doing the work because V's too weak to do anything other than just sit sit at the sidelines and shoot um, and that's when the, the game does get a little bit boring I guess um, whereas again yeah I think Astral Chain with everything that you can do um, using your partner and just exploring the world and catching all the clues uh, and making it like a real detective case is more interesting. The only the only reason I've finished DMC5 and I haven't finished Astral Chain is that they've come they come at different times of when I've been able to finish when I've actually had the time. Mm. Uh, DMC5 I finished in like two days because it's only a very short journey. Um but Astral, yeah, Astral Chain's a bit longer. Astral Chain's a mm. bit longer. It's about so, twice the length, actually, isn't it? I think so, yeah. yeah. So, I've, I've still got some work to do on Astral Chain, but I feel like these two could duke it out pretty well. Uh, I don't I don't know about the reception on Gears 5. It's pretty good. Like, It's it's kind of hard for a game like Gears. Yeah, it's a, To fuck up, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the fifth game in... A long-running franchise. Yeah, so it's not going to sort of get the... Well, I mean, insane. Obviously, DMC Five is the fifth game too. Yeah. But it's been it's been a bit longer since a DMC game, so it's made a bit more of a splash, I think. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because leading into Gears Five, I was actually pretty excited to play it, and I still am. I've got my laptop now to sort of get into the multiplayer and that. Yeah. Because I I enjoyed um what I played of Gears One. Yeah. But I sort of I didn't finish it through because it was like old by the time I got to it. So I'm like, eh, I'll play four of and now I'll play five yeah. and now I'll probably be like okay, I'll play six yeah exactly but we'll, we'll yeah. see we'll see how it goes but yeah Astro, I'll, I'll vote for Astral Chain can't say definitively but I've finished it and everything it's a hard vote for me but um, yeah I, I'm just going to say it'll be between those two I'm surprised Sekiro isn't there to be honest yeah kind of weird how it's not there but oh well I don't know why Apex Legends and 
Apex Legends and Metro's there, but Sekiro's not there, which is... I just don't know anybody that's playing Apex Legends at the moment, <laughs> which is which is even weirder to see that it's here everywhere. I never hear anything about Apex anymore. Hmm. And obviously we've got the action game category, yeah, and we've got action adventure game category, which is like... So basically adventure adds um, traversal and puzzle solving, whereas action is just focused on combat. Right. So having a little bit of puzzle stuff in Sekiro sort of discludes it from just being an action game. <laughs> yeah, well. It's kind of it's 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 weird. Yeah, I, I guess it does cuz like Astral Chain you're not doing puzzles, DMC you're not doing like none of these games have Astral Chain you're definitely doing shit though. You're going around and doing your investigations of the case and all that stuff and talking to people. <clears throat> it's definitely got its own thing. Yeah, but it's not so much like exploration which obviously borderlands control death stranding Resident so. evil yeah. obviously zelda has so yeah i'll get well, i'll ask my own question there you go ask questions and you uh you get answers you I get guess. answers i guess that's how the saying goes uh, all right the big one bryce the, the big that's right game of the year recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields we have control Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, The Outer Wild, uh, Outer Worlds, yeah, well, well. Outer, 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 and mm. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Oh, well, yes, let's, let's give a bias golf clap to Smash. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so. Obviously, strong contenders. We've we've already had sort of touched on most of these games. I think I haven't played Control. Have you played Control? No. No. Okay. So we'll get around to playing that one day. Death Stranding. Neither of us played Death Stranding. We we'll get around to it one day. Resident Evil Two. Uh, haven't played it. Watched it by proxy. Um, no people that have played it. They think it's pretty good. I don't see how they could fuck it up. Yeah, probably deserves to be there. It's a good remake. Uh, Sekiro Shadows Shadows Die Twice no plenty of people have played this game absolutely phenomenal game um, just haven't played it myself really need to and Outer Worlds on my list got it downloaded haven't played it so the only one I've actually played is Smash Bros Ultimate um, so biasism ensues but uh, it didn't make the cut last year for the Game Awards by I think it was like a week yeah, so it came out on the day of the last Game Awards, so December tenth. So, yeah, it would have it would have missed it by probably two weeks. It would have missed it by almost a month, even I think. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, just like going through last year, sort of the hype leading up to this game when it first got announced, with uh, sort of the Splatoon inklings and how you saw sort of the flame come up and it was like reflected in the eye. Um, just straight away from that moment the hype was there and I know that that hype you could almost not count considering it was 2018 for that so um, that'd be like you know game of the year 2018 as far as all the hype goes but as for this year it's mainly been like the staying power of the game being mainly with the DLC updates and I, I dare say a lot of people were like oh you know I played Smash over the holidays but this year I never touched it yeah whereas like we touched it a fair bit, but we probably didn't touch it as much as we would have liked to. There's so much other stuff coming out. Yeah, this year was a bit crazy for Nintendo. Yeah. There was there was nothing like that I would have said put on the game of the year list. Like Luigi's Mansion. I wouldn't say put on the game of the year, but fuck, it was a fun game. Oh, yeah. Um, but Super Smash Bros, I am pretty... I'm confident that it belongs there. And I'm happy that it did get there because last year when it missed the nominations, I'm like, oh man, that's disappointing because it's a game that should be there. Yeah. And it's good that it's at least getting its recognition this year. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's sort of a... It's kind of weird because you got like your... They're all like third-person games apart from Outer Worlds, which is first-person. Then you got just like Smash, which is a random fighting game in there. You can't really choose. I think... Uh, um. I think with Smash Bros, the thing that's that's really got me is that this game, this version of Smash Bros could be the last one 
and I'm not saying that in the prospect of like he says that every time but like it could be the last one if he wanted it to be the last one and they could just add to that to the end of time Mm, and, yeah, and at least the last one by Sakurai. Yeah, and I and I feel like you know they could keep adding DLC characters, make the roster absolutely ginormous, keep the balance up, do all that shit. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and you know what? I, I I think you know it could reach you know 120 characters, and I still think it could be a ongoing fantastic game, just absolutely filled to the brim. Mm, and you use like five characters as your main. You're like cool. <laughs> I I just feel like. Uh, the way that they've sort of handled this game, I'm, like it come out and it was missing a few things, but they addressed it, they moved on, they pushed forward, they've <clears throat> made some absolutely incredible relationships with companies um, outside the spectrum, just having the characters in Smash, you know, it's kind of a marvel. Uh, when, you go on the, when you go on the internet uh, and you look at it and people are like, I want... X character for Smash and that character could just be something completely completely random out of the blue you wouldn't even know what they are and I mean Smash has sort of had that appeal for years but I've never felt it harder than Ultimate mm. I think like the thought that goes into each character so say you got Mario it's all pretty basic but each move is familiar yeah. whether it's his down A which is like oh that's from Super Mario 64 you do like his up B which he you know does like a normal coin punch like oh yes that's from like the original Mario Bros where he punches the boxes it's like all it's all familiar and like it's especially when he goes into like more in depth characters like Rio and Ken it's like this is their move from Street Fighter 2 this is their move from Street Fighter 3 um, in Terry where it was like a 40 minute presentation being like this is exactly our thinking behind these characters even with smash wii u where it's like uh this is villager and if you got me to do villager be like oh yeah he he kicks and he punches and he's a little boy <laughs> <laughs> but just like how creative they were like all right animal crossing is all about your tools and that's how that's what we're going to be using for the move set you got the bowling ball you got the shovel you got the slingshot you got all of these things in there and it's like every time they announce a new character and I pick it up or see the direct or whatever I'm like that is really smart yeah. and I think that's what sets Smash apart from other fighting games and I'm not I'm not a big fighting game expert I can't I can't say that it's that no other fighting game does it because they definitely do um, but yeah Smash is just for a crossover game mm. it's it's the ultimate crossover crossover game yeah the, the attention to detail is so impressive yeah so impressive yeah you've only got to watch the Terry Direct to see that mm. you know how much how much time and effort that uh, Sakurai puts into these characters being in the game just on his own mental capacity yeah you know he puts a lot of effort into it yeah so I know for me like if, if I played these other games I'd probably still go Smash because Smash is like top 3 favourite game yeah. so that's just, that's just me um, but yeah i I can't. I couldn't see my vote being any other way, and I'm so happy that it's there. I don't really care if it wins. I think if like Death Stranding comes out and wins, I think that's fantastic for Kojima and the team that you know left Konami. I think that's fantastic. Whether it's Control and Remedy finally getting a big win, that game wasn't a huge commercial uh, success, so getting the win here would be really great for that team. Um, even Capcom coming back and like they're really in a resurgence with you know the Resident Evil games and Monster Hunter, so that'd be great for them. Um, Sekiro, Sekiro with um, From Software they've been pumping out nothing but quality games for ye- like years now it'd be great for them to pick up a game and Obsidian you know going private well they're not they're not with it's published by private divisions now but obviously they were bought by Microsoft but yeah, be a great win for them too sort of like basically putting the middle finger up at uh, Bethesda who sort of like really um, you know they missed out on their bonuses by 1% on uh, Metacritic did you hear about that? No. Yeah, so when they made um, Fallout New Vegas, um, for, for them to get a, a bonus on, on the game, they had to get a Metacritic. I think I think it was 89, but don't quote me exactly what the percentage is. But they got like literally like a 98, so they didn't get the bonus. So there's a there was a bit of, you know, water under the bridge there. Mm. <laughs> as far as that went. So I think... Anyone who wins this, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. But just as far as like, 
a bit of like a, a bit of a fist bump for the home home team. Um, some one of my favourite franchises, and a game we covered so much last year. I think it'll be really awesome to see Nintendo go up there and claim it for Smash. But I think it could happen. Yeah. Um, if you wanted me to be honest, I think the game that could take this out and take it for the good out of these games um, the two games that will absolutely just take it out for the good will be Sekiro or Smash mm. and Smash I think out of these has the biggest fan base yes it's sold you know, 15 million plus units so I don't think you know none of these other games will come close to that I don't know what Sekiro is at or Resident, Resident Evil is not any of that but I don't know what Sekiro is at so. From Software have a huge cult following though oh yeah like I, th- I think that's the thing that'll put it above what we've got going on here obviously Death Stranding is a Kojima production mm. which in in and of itself would um, probably put it up there as in one of those games that'll just get absolutely slammed with votes but that game has been under very very half half criticism mm. so I don't think it will reach that same vote yeah. count it's, it's also an exclusive <laughs> PlayStation game published by Sony as well so that's right yeah. it might rally up the PlayStation base PS4 base of you know 100 million so people to vote for that game because it's like yeah go PlayStation as well yeah I don't, know. I don't think no it, I, I yeah. don't think it will yeah it probably won't it's not like a Horizon of un- or Uncharted where that would happen that's right yeah. yeah and Death Stranding is only going to appeal to a certain type of person and it's not that game hmm. um, that it appeals to everyone uh, Control again I feel like didn't get as much uh, fucking what do you call it didn't get enough fucking <laughs> 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 didn't get enough of a push in the marketing in the marketing oh no no um, to sort of crash out the numbers um, Resident Evil 2 is a remake um, and remakes are cool but I don't think they're ever going to take out game of the year hmm. uh, and Outer Worlds fantastic game uh, it's on the I guess the most underperforming platform at the moment Outer Worlds hmm. mm. oh it's on it's on everything, so... Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, there you go. So, um... <laughs> it's on the most un- unperforming platform, which is all of them. They all underperform. <laughs> no, sorry. But, yeah, it's on PlayStation as well. Okay, see, I didn't know that. Anyway, um... But I still I still don't feel like there's enough talk around Outer Worlds. Yeah, it sort of come and went pretty quick. <clears throat> yeah. But in saying that, a lot of games that do come and go, like it's still stayed on my list because I'm looking at it going, yes. Need to play it. I yeah. need to play that. It looks like fun. But yeah. um, Sek- Sekiro and Sekiro. Super Smash Bros. both have huge cult followings. Um, and I feel like Sekiro hit a lot of bars for many people. And, uh, it, and it, you know, it is actually a 2019 game. <laughs> yeah. As, as much as like the Game Awards sort of uh, nomination cut off and all that like personally to me we were talking about Smash Bros last year as game of the year because it, it was a game of the year last year yeah so maybe people will think that way as well just go you know that is actually a game for this year regardless yeah. of the cut off date shenanigans so I think it will be Smash vs Sekiro um, obviously I want Smash to win it does have tough competition but if you weigh up the values I think Sekiro probably has the best chance. Mm. No, I'll probably agree with that too. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> oh, oh, God, Bros. God, that's a lot of talking. We should end the episode. You're getting choked up. Smash is going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there you go. That's that's the Game Award. So, I reckon um, on a, another episode, on the, I guess, next week's episode, we'll go over a sort of the results. We won't talk about it as uh, much as we did this episode, but... Yeah, I really enjoy the Game Awards. I think it's a great sort of show Jeff Keighley puts on. Yeah. It's great celebrating, you know, the games of the year in like a sort of a unified sort of format rather than just going to IGN, GameSpot. Absolutely. Hearing yeah. their personal games, which is good too, but having like a all, all integrated place, it's really good. And 
all the announcements are fun too. I think that's a fun little thing they put in there too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Bryce, let's end it there. Everybody, thank you very much for listening to the House of Mario episode 125. If you'd like to support the show, you can follow the show on Twitter at the House of Mario. <laughs> I'm sort of I'm out of order. I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at the House of Mario on Facebook. I guess at the House of Mario, and uh, you can support the show on Patreon at Patreon.com/slash/idruby, where uh, this week I've put up a secret recording which is basically behind the scenes of what's going on with the podcast uh, talking about some uh, some things there which are a bit personal so I'm just going to leave it there um, Bryce you're doing a um, the House of Mario Encore which is sort of like a just a solo podcast yes either of us do that's right um, fortnightly you can listen to the first episode it's on our feed yeah it is too yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, what are you talking about this week I'm not telling you oh <laughs> well, I'll, I'll block my ears. You can tell them. <laughs> no, I have a, I have a couple, I have a couple subjects, um, but I'm yet to lay down one exactly. So. Okay, okay, yeah, fair enough. All right, so, yeah. I'm working on that Wednesday. Yeah, right, so that that will hit Patreon on Friday. Yes. So Bryce, if they want to find out exactly what that topic is and when it goes up, the moment it goes up, and they want to follow you on Twitter as well. <laughs> What can they uh, What can they type in the uh, the search there? Just at, at IV Revan. Oh, yeah. how do you spell that? I V R E V I N. All right. And if you have a, a French keyboard, even though it uses the same characters, uh, how would you pronounce that? Instead of <laughs> is it is it gris or is it gris or is it grey? Oh, fuck off. Yeah. Yeah, mm, yeah, and you can I'm find gonna smack you in the mouth. <laughs> in the mouth, yeah. I need, to, I need a good smack. Then you'll speak some French. <laughs> yeah, well, my mouth's a bit numb after all this blabbering. Sacre bleu, sacre bleu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you can find me at iadruby, and uh, yeah, all good fun stuff happening on Patreon. Stuff happening on the House of Mario feed, Game Awards this week. All good fun leading yeah, up baby. to Christmas. Mm. It's gonna be a good time. Good time. Good time all around. For sure. Uh, Nintendo Jukebox this week. I uh, actually completely forgot about it and I've got a load. We always do. Yep. The thing is with the Nintendo Jukebox is uh, there's mm. so much great music tracks that you can listen to uh, from the Jukebox just by checking the playlist on SoundCloud. Yes, you can definitely uh, do that. So, so, you know, if you ever feel like you want to go and look for some nice music uh, and you just need a giant playlist of it, we have it there on SoundCloud. Yeah, go to soundcloud.com slash the house of Mario and click on playlists and it's all there for you. Yeah. So if you're like, I really enjoyed that song from episode 23 where Drew and Bryce were really inexperienced podcasters, but that jukebox that, that was great. Song, yeah, yeah. You can go there. And, you know, we're so experienced now, Bryce. We're yeah. so experienced. We have 102 episodes on top of that. So, you know, I would want to fucking hope so. Yeah, wouldn't I? You would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what, Bryce. We're going um, Mother 3, uh, the uh, a 90s synth remix. Ooh. Okay. Because of the uh, news that Sony is uh, publishing the Mother soundtrack on vinyl. Beautiful. So, guys, enjoy the track and we will catch you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>